Welcome to Great County Life. I'm Sarah Carmichael. JC is off this week. Looking forward to the show. I'm going to be speaking to Shauna as well as Jackie about the upcoming Artisans show and sale. And I'll also be talking to Linda from the Kiwanis Club about a gift wrapping fundraiser that they're going to be doing this year. And of course, Renee from the Owen Sound Animal Shelter will be bringing in a special friend that is looking to be adopted into a loving forever home. Now, of course, it's a busy time of year. We just had the Santa Claus parade and that weekend was super busy. We had Hockey Fest going on. A big thank you, of course, to the sponsors and the organizers and all the volunteers that helped out with that. The Women's Hockey Showcase on Saturday was hugely successful. We had some great girls local teams playing and then the university teams playing at the Bayshore on Saturday afternoon. So that was really cool to see uh, the university level players coming in and playing in a neutral area, the Waterloo Warriors and the York, uh, the York Lions. So again, thanks to those players for being here and thanks to everybody for, for going out to those events as well as the coaching clinics and the on ice clinics that they had. It was a busy couple of days to say the least. And then of course the Santa Claus parade, the lighting of the Festival of Northern Lights. And it's just been a bit of a whirlwind the last few days. So it's, it's nice to kind of slow down a little bit today, but um, we are of course full fledged into the holiday season now. And there's lots of uh, Santa Claus parades coming up. And I just um, wanted to also mention that uh, there is a, 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 um, a fill a tub toy drive that's gonna be happening or that ha is happening now at the Lake House Bath and Kitchen in Wyerton. Uh, they are looking to collect toys that are gonna be going out locally and you're gonna have a chance to win a luxury bath retreat gift basket. So if you bring in something for their toy drive, you're gonna get uh, entry into that, that raffle and they're gonna be collecting toys there until uh, December 10th. So it would be great to, to see lots of people there. Also, I should mention that the Scenic City Lions Club is selling their, their Christmas their Christmas cakes. Uh, I actually spoke with one of the, the members of the Lions Club at an attack game recently, um, Katie Gillespie, and she was telling me that they had made almost 900 Christmas cakes. They've been very, very busy over the last few weeks getting these cakes um, up and running, and I know that they are looking forward to having those sold, um, and they're $15. So if you're interested in getting a Christmas cake, uh, you can reach out to them. You can find the Scenic City Lions Club on Facebook, and you can also find them at the farm market and I believe at the show and sale uh, artisan market as well so uh, a great opportunity to get a delicious Christmas cake and also support the Lions Club in uh, in what they what they do now uh, this Saturday coming up the Owen Sound Attack are going to be hosting the North Bay Battalion and that's a seven o'clock game at the Bay Shore I understand that tickets are very limited to that game already so if you were wanting to be there you can go to tickets.attackhockey.com and the doors will open at six, puck drops at seven. I think the boys uh, are really gonna need some extra cheering because they haven't been doing the greatest at their home games as of late. You know, it is what it is. But I think that having more people there cheering nice and loud would make a big difference for them and uh, definitely boost them up. Uh, also, Cobble Beach is having, having some holiday buffets and shows. Uh, they've got some happening this weekend. And if you want to get details about that, you can go to cobblebeach.com. Now, it is uh, a great time of year. It's a special time of year because we have all these different events and holiday parties. But uh, I do want to, you know, remind you that not everybody is in uh, a position to to have the, the best holiday because times are tough for a lot of people um, with the rising cost of groceries and gas and rent and pretty much everything going up in price. It is gonna be a bit of a struggle for, for a lot of people. So if you are in a position, uh, please show generosity, show kindness, uh, donate to the Salvation Army Food Bank. You can donate to the United Way because they are able to uh, provide uh, things for, for families in need. I know that Big Brothers Big Sisters as well was doing uh, an event um, with like a Secret Santa event asking for people to bring in gifts that are then going to be given to the, the kids in, in their programs. So if you can, uh, please please give generously this, this season. And another way that you can help if you can't necessarily afford to, to give financially, I get that, absolutely, but you could always give your time. Uh, that is definitely something that's valuable as well. I know that the Salvation Army is looking for people to work their kettles. Uh, you may have seen these. Uh, they set them up at grocery stores, at the mall, in different places around town. 
and you simply are standing there with the Salvation Army, the red kettle, and you're gonna be asking people as they're coming and going to make a contribution. And it could be $5, it could be 50 cents, you know, whatever people are able to give. Um, I believe the shifts are a couple of hours. It's not a huge time commitment, but they ultimately, you know, need more people to be able to, to get these uh, kettles uh, up and running. So if that's something that you're able to do, that would be fantastic. Now, uh, we're gonna be speaking to Linda from Kiwanis about uh, the gift wrapping campaign that they're, that they're helping out with this year. They're gonna need volunteers for that as well. And that's an opportunity there. I know that United Way is gonna be doing some uh, sock collection at some of the Santa Claus parades. They did that just this past Saturday at the Owen Sound Parade, but they're also going to be doing it, I think, at like four or five more parades. So if um, you want to help them out and you want to walk the parade route and collect socks with them, I'm sure they would love to have you. And I mean, there's also O'Share, which is obviously a, a food um, program for people in need uh, who are experiencing food insecurity. You could volunteer your time with them, you know, helping prep dishes, helping serve dishes. Um, maybe you want to help, you know, going to pick up supplies. There's there's lots and lots of options. Certainly, if you are in a position to to give your time, and because I get it, if you're not able to uh, donate financially, it is what it is. I, I think a lot of people are really feeling that, especially as we're trying to, you know, gather. Christmas presents and uh, you know trying to make sure that everybody uh, you know gets something nice for the holiday but uh, sometimes just giving your time is is really uh, really valuable so I do hope that you uh, think about that and uh, certainly if you are going to be shopping, support local. We have so many fantastic businesses, so many great uh, business owners that really appreciate your patronage, and you know it makes a big difference because those are the companies that are sponsoring your soccer teams. Those are the companies that are donating gifts for silent auctions and fundraisers. So we need to show our support to them as they show support to us as the community. So hopefully you can stay tuned with us. We'll be speaking to Shauna and Jackie about the upcoming artisan show and sale next on Great County Life. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hello, I'm Liz Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. In 2008, carbon monoxide, a deadly invisible gas, killed an entire family in our province. That tragedy led to a new law requiring homes with potential CO sources to have alarms. John Gignac's family members passed away that day, and he shares his story to save others. Please make sure you have working CO alarms in your home. Protect your family today. Think it's okay to drive high? Think again. Drug-impaired driving is as illegal as drunk driving, and in Ontario, the penalties are the same. If police suspect you're driving under the influence of drugs of any kind or a combination of drugs and alcohol and you fail a roadside test, your license will be suspended immediately for up to 30 days. You'll pay a penalty of $198. And you can be charged with a criminal offense of impaired driving the same as alcohol. Driving high is never okay. Hi, I'm David Sherman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show, where my guest will be Mayor Ross Kentner of Meaford. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Great County Life. Joining me today in studio is Shauna and Jackie. Now, Shauna is one of the organizers of the upcoming Artisan Show, and Jackie is from CMHA Grey Bruce. So this event is a huge event. It is involving a lot of different vendors, so give us the details. 
Well, the Artisan Holiday Show is, this year is happening uh, December 1st through 3rd, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, we've added uh, this year, Friday night is a sip and shop, oh. and uh, we are lucky to have Roost Wine Co. Uh, coming in. They're going to be giving out free samples to everyone that shows up. Right. Um, and obviously, they can uh, people can also buy their bottles of wine, which is lovely. Um, we have approximately 60 vendors, and they're coming from all over. They're coming from Collingwood, Manitoulin Island, all over the Bruce Peninsula. So we've got a really great lineup this year. Right, and what sort of like products? Is it a wide variety? Is it mostly food, kind of decor stuff? Is it everything? It's a, it's a wide variety, it's, okay. it's everything. Um, my friends and I, or the organizers of the show, we've tried to keep it to about three-ish of the same. Right. So, mm -hmm. but still diverse. So we'll have, you know, three or four jewelers, but they'll be vastly different. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of repeats. Um, you're gonna see food, uh, definitely. Um, artisanal food from all over the area. We've got chocolates, we've got um, uh, custom tacos bringing their, their sourdough breads and baguettes. Um, we've got uh, Southampton Olive Oil is coming mm -hmm. um, with their products. Um, there's pastries, there's sugar cookies, there's everything for the holidays, mm -hmm. everything you could possibly need. And then, of course, home decor. You've got the holiday decor for your, your front porch or your home. Um, it's just, there's baby clothing, everything. Everything's going to be there. Right. And, of course, this event was hugely popular last year. Hugely. And yes. so you're like, we have to do this again. I think that people would riot if you didn't. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, right? Yep. <laughs> but it is going to be happening at the Bay Shore, yes. and it's going to be taking over basically four rooms you said like mm -hmm. the big room that has like the stage in it yep mm -hmm. and then also the two carpeted rooms are going to be opened up into one mm -hmm. and so there's just going to be vendors everywhere plus you said in the lobby as well there's going to be vendors oh yeah we had we had vendors in the lobby last year <laughs> they're back again um we've had so many people interested in this show we have to make sure that we fill every nook and cranny that we can right um and uh, CMHA Fresh Roots is going to be there. Um, Chef Trevor will be working out of the on-site kitchen. Uh, he's going to be supplying uh, hot soups and sandwiches, snacks, and definitely his baked goods. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's for everyone to purchase, vendors and guests. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He is known for his baking, yeah, for yes. sure. Get the butter tarts <laughs> The butter while tarts you and, can. and the baklava. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping he makes it this year. I think we might have to just let him know that if he doesn't, mm -hmm. there will be a problem. Trevor, mm -hmm. make your baklava. <laughs> <laughs> so admission for the for the show is two dollars per person. It's it's by donation. Okay. So yeah, we we ask for two dollars minimum. Okay. But please donate more. Right. Uh, because it's all going to CMHA's Youth Awareness Program. Yeah, absolutely. So we're there all weekend at the door. Um, myself and our students and our team, and um, we're the meet and greeters. That's our favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have one of those little tappy taps, which is awesome, square. square. <laughs> and uh, so when people come in and they say, oh, I have no circle money or no paper money, I'm like, we can help. Right. So um, so that's awesome. We, we couldn't believe last year, because it was the first time where like, mm -hmm. um, we kind of set a goal, like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we raised $1,000, right? And we got that on the Friday night. Wow. And we're like, oh my gosh. Um, mm -hmm. And But also while, while we're there, it's been really neat, the conversations that we have, like people come by and they're like, so when we came in, you said you were from CMHA Great Bruce. Do you mind if we ask a question? Absolutely. So that was really great. We had, um, so that was fun. And um, so just the fact that Fresh Roots is in the, the kitchen and we're at the door, mm -hmm. it's just such a nice partnership. Absolutely. Do you remember how much was raised last year oh, in total? Six, three. It was a lot. It was a lot. Right. Yes. <laughs> more than anticipated. Yes. And we're hoping to raise more this year. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good problem to have. You mm -hmm. you made more than you thought you would. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. People were so great. And then when they found out that it was CMHA, you know, maybe then a, a 20 went in the jar instead mm -hmm. of a 10 or a 2 knee. It was, it was awesome. We were so grateful. Wow. That's awesome. Now, you said the money is going specifically to youth mental health programming. So do you want to tell us a little bit about kind of what that is? Mm -hmm. So the majority of the programs at CMHA, um, Grey Bruce, are covered by the Ministry of Health. So anything that's direct service. And that's the way it should always be. So then that leaves some of the um, other programs um, rely on community funding. 
need and ours is one of those okay. so when we go out and about into the schools and we do presentations at workplace um, we offer trainings that has to be covered by non-Ministry of Health dollars. And so we've just been really um, fortunate that we've been doing this for 20 years and we have existed solely on third-party fundraisers, community donations, um, foundations, sponsors, and, and events like this. So um, we're so thankful. Wow, that's awesome. And I know that you were recently in a uh, school with some of the attack players. So this morning to yeah. come here, we drove from a school because we had um, talked today as a program that um, is now 10 years old with the OHL and CMHA Ontario, where we partner with the attack. And so we took three of their players out to a school. They talked to the kids about how they look after their own mental health, how they take care of their friends and family and their um, fellow players. Um, what do they do to stay healthy? Um, so they talk to the kids about eating a good breakfast and getting lots of sleep and how important that is. And we talk to them about social media because we know um, everyone is everybody's friend when they're doing well and yeah. maybe not so much when they're not. And so how do you balance that? And so that was a really important question too. Um, so we had a great time when I left. They were playing five on three ball hockey. Um, I think the attack were winning when I left, but it was really <laughs> close. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's really cool because, you know, these kids go to the games and they mm -hmm. definitely see these players as role models mm -hmm. so bringing them right into the school to talk to them is is really cool and, I, and I'm sure the players get a kick out of it too they love it, it builds them up right because yeah. they're headed from here to Windsor so you know this is the the um, the wind under their wings to like you got this like yeah. you know Grey Bruce is behind you regardless <laughs> of what social media does know that there's all these kids that are cheering you on yeah. every single game. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I, I love that um, programs like that are being supported by great events like this. And it's mm -hmm. a super big community <laughs> event. Yeah, <laughs> it's obviously a great partnership. It makes so much sense. And the fact that you're able to be there and you help out at the door is a big help for, for you and your friends that are organizing it. There's no one better we'd rather have at the door than Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> I feel like even if it wasn't benefiting CMHA just mm -hmm. because you're friends, she would be there anyway. Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'd be like, the doors aren't even open yet. She's waiting outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll be there. Uh, yep. speaking, speaking of actually the doors, what, uh, what time is this running? Um, so Friday night, it's 5 o'clock until 9 o'clock. Okay, and that includes um, the sip and shop. That's the sip and shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, right from 5, 4 hours. <laughs> Come on and sip. Um, and uh, Saturday is 10 to 5, and Sunday is 10 to 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. So lots of opportunity there. Lots, lots of time to uh, do some shopping. And it's, a, and it's a great chance to, you know, start, maybe finish your holiday shopping, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and be ahead of the game because I know I'm guilty of the last minute shopping. Mm -hmm. Every single year, I tell myself, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be more prepared. You know, I'm not going to be running around on December 23rd, mm -hmm. but inevitably I do <laughs> because I'm a procrastinator. You're going to have to come to the show. I know. And that's just it. This is going to be perfect. I'll be able to pick up what I need for everybody and also support CMHA at the same time and get some soup and baked goods from CMHA's oh, yeah. Fresh Roots. Keep up your energy. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <'Cause> shopping. <laughs> Right? Requires yep. goodies and coffee mm -hmm. and snacks. Yes. Right? And then you can buy more goodies right. from the vendors <laughs> and then get, you know, a little something something for the baby on your list or the new mom on your list right. or <laughs> all the above. All the above. Oh my gosh, it sounds really fun. And uh, as I said, I was at it last year, so I do know that it's an extensive list of, of vendors mm -hmm. that are going to be there. And mm -hmm. if people want to get more details, uh, the website, I believe, is probably the best the best spot. Yep, artisansholidayshow.ca. Wow. And I, I was on there this morning, actually, and I saw the list of vendors. It's a big list. <laughs> it's a big list. It's a big list. Yeah. Is there any room still, possibly? I think we may have one of our overflow booths left okay. and it's we always have we always have three odd spots mm -hmm. inevitably right um so if we can fill them great if not we'll plug a tree in right. that's fine mm -hmm. we'll make it look pretty <laughs> um but yeah i think there's one odd space left okay um the last two odd spaces were filled last night which is great wow um, we've had a couple vendors pull out because they're moving or they're going back to school, that sort of thing. And we've had our wait list, so it's just, okay, one's out, one's in. You know, try and make the best show possible with the best vendors possible. And right. 
Yeah, so right. maybe one spot. Maybe, if, maybe. if possible, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> now you mentioned uh, one of the ones that's just added is uh, charcuterie boards. Yes, um, we last year we had two uh, up and coming artists, which were great. Um, I think one last year was 16. Mm -hmm. And the other was 18, okay. somewhere there. So the 18-year-old who was making charcuterie boards is getting prepared to go back to university. So um, yeah, we had, uh, I, just in case, I'm not going to say who, but uh, yeah, we had another vendor pop in at last minute and say, hey, do you still have room in your show? And I'm like, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, fingers crossed, they, <laughs> uh, they fill out the, the contract and wow. We'll have we'll have a a, a well-known person artisan. <laughs> yes, she doesn't want to give too much slash away. Artisan. <laughs> yes. Speaking of well-known artisan, you have not pumped up your own tires yet mm -hmm. in this show. One I was wondering. I was wondering if there was going to be a mention of the the dry rubs. <laughs> I. Mm. So yeah, I I'm an organizer. I'm also a vendor. Um, BMKC Canada Inc. is my company, or I'm more well known as Big Mama's Kitchen Creations. <laughs> I'm Big Mama. Um, so yeah, my barbecue sauces, uh, dry rubs, hot sauces, Asian sauces, they'll all be there. Wow. And this has been a partnership that's been around a long time because Since you've the been, beginning. right, with the CMHA um, garden, yep. right? And the and kitchen and the hot sauce and mm -hmm. yeah, I've, mm -hmm. yeah, I've been a big supporter of CMHA since I started the company. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been about eight years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight years. And what some of your sauces like um, cry, something crying and, and <laughs> Reaper and is this, like, oh, like, these are the like hot sauce the names? names. The hot sauce names, okay. yeah. Based on the peppers like a, that go in them, oh are like. <gasps> <laughs> so, do you have like a, a Carolina Reaper sauce? I do have a Reaper sauce. Okay. It won uh, best Reaper sauce at the 2020 Canadian Hot Sauce Awards. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. That was a while ago. It's all but right. But still, yeah. that's a, a nice Amazing. feather in your cap. Yeah. That's got to feel good. Yeah. The other the other hot sauces have done well mm -hmm. at competition. Um, they've pretty much all placed in the top 11 at the Royal Winter Fair. So. Okay. Have you ever seen that show Hot Ones? Yeah. <laughs> that would be the goal, right? To get, or has your hot sauce been on there? Has not been on okay. there. Um, it's tough to get in. Okay. Um, and I have been thinking about it because a number of people have said you should do right. it. So maybe. I um, think so. And they haven't had a female hot sauce <gasps> maker yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I do have a, a unique sauce that I might send in. So I we'll think see. you should. I think you should. I before I, I was here, I lived in Thunder Bay, and there's a, a hot sauce split there called um, Heart. What's it called Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Okay. And they were featured on Hot Ones, and it was the talk of the town. Like people would not be quiet about it for like six months. That's so fantastic. it could be really good for your business. Could be. And uh, and especially if you know you make the host and whatever celebrity, mm -hmm. you know, tear up. I think that's the goal ultimately. Make them cry. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the hot the better, the better. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, um, as you said, there's going to be a great variety of, of vendors, mm -hmm. uh, not only, you know, sauces, but home decor, um, you know, people that do signs. Uh, woodworking, and metal work, uh, all kinds, all yeah. kinds. It's almost like the, the North version of the one of a kind show in a way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Which is Amazing. awesome. And um, anything else that people should need to know about the, the event itself? I mean, ultimately, the money, as I said, goes to CMHA, mm -hmm. and, and that's super important. But um, is there anything else that we want to mention about, you know, what's going on with CMHA? Oh, right now? always. So mm -hmm. um, we, um, we've got our schools booked for the year. So what our little team does is we um, have a short list of about um, kind of 10 is our happy place. We're about 13 right now, so we're a bit running ragged a little but um, <laughs> that means we visit 13 schools on a monthly basis so that each time we go back in we build on the messages we had last time mm -hmm. um, so we have that already booked so That's basically the schedule is set till the end of June and um, and we talked to about um, 10,000 people over that school year um, providing about 600 presentations because at each school we go to we don't just talk to the kids we make sure that same message is being shared with the teachers so we go to staff meetings um, we go to parent council meetings um, and then um, we have a gang that 
runs our social media. So if you're on social media, we have CMHA Youth Awareness and the Fan Club, that's our puppets. Um, mm -hmm. So we are always posting stuff on there um, in terms of events or um, awareness information or um, webinars that are coming up or just um, good messaging, like mm -hmm. that reminder to take care of yourself or it's okay to breathe today um, yeah. because breathing is kind of important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, there's, um, it's, it's one of those times right now we're kind of in this perfect storm. Um, the economy's gone up and we're just came, come out of a pandemic or we're headed into winter, all yeah. kind of the check marks that can bring people down. So definitely what we try and do is just make sure that our social media balances that. Mm -hmm. And if people are looking for something to put on their, their feed that reminds them that, you know what, it's, it's okay to feel <sighs> these feels and here's something to help. Right, here's some, so. some coping sort mm -hmm. of ideas and some things to inspire you. Mm -hmm. I love that. And resources, where, where do we find the helpers when we need them? Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. because they're out there. I know, mm -hmm. I, you know people will get into a state of mind where they feel like, oh, nobody cares, oh, nobody's mm -hmm. there, but they're, mm -hmm. they're there, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And CMHA is a great uh, you know, advocate locally. You guys are super involved in the community. Mm -hmm. I see you mm -hmm. at tons of events and, and uh, different, different things around the community, so that's incredible but uh, the uh, Artisan Holiday Show and Sale is a big one and that's coming up next weekend so that would be December 1st, 2nd, 3rd and the more the merrier. They want to get everybody in there mm -hmm. because uh, not only are you supporting the local vendors, mm -hmm. but you're supporting CMHA. And uh, you know, a big thanks, Shauna, to you and your team for putting this together. I know it's a lot of work. I know it is. <laughs> it's worth it. it. Well, that's just it. It's At the end it. of the day, you enjoy it, and it's yeah. worth it, and everybody has a great time. So, mm -hmm. uh, if anybody's interested, uh, again, what's the website? Artisans Holiday Show uh, at. Holiday, artisansholidayshow.ca. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll see you there December 1st, and uh, we'll be right back on Great County Life. I'm a singer-songwriter from Six Nations and I've been writing songs about my experience and with that being said it's helped me hold hope in my heart in following my dreams and being resilient to everyday Indigenous battles. Competition between spirit, earth and wind, let me tell you now. This song in particular, The Shiner, is a special song that I wrote for my grandfather. He was a snow snake maker, and that is a Haudenosaunee winter sport. It's my job to educate and to share, and the music allows me to do that. He'll be shining snow snakes and mud cats to the end of his days. Please join me for HealthLink, a program connecting home, community, and health care. Please join me and watch HealthLink on Rogers TV.
Welcome back to Gray County Life. Joining me now in studio from the Kiwanis is Linda Van Alst. Hello. How are you, Sarah? I am good. Thank you so much. I have to say, this feels strange <laughs> sitting on this side because I was <laughs> over there for so many years. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. You're not used to being interviewed. You're the one used to doing the interview. That's right, asking all the questions. <laughs> but it looks like we planned our attire. Yeah. Yeah, we, exactly. we didn't, but we're both very festive. We are. And I mean, rightfully so, since we obviously just had the Santa Claus parade this past weekend. We're feeling more in the spirit of things after that incredible parade with, what, 90 entries? 91? I think there's 91. <laughs> yeah. Just I absolutely think there was 91. Wild. <laughs> yeah. And we, it, you know, it's always such a fun time. It's so exciting. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm so happy that everybody has finally come together to get everything at the on Saturday and in the evening. Yeah, I know. I love the evening parade. Like, I remember going to the parade as a kid uh, here in Owen Sound at like 10 in the morning. Yes. And it was fun, don't get me wrong, but there's just something way more magical about it happening at night because the lights, you can actually see the lights and it just, it, it makes, a, I feel like it's a little easier for people to get to at and 5 p.m. A whole fun vibe downtown yeah. for the evening. And I'm think of the parents, you know, they don't have to bring the kids in in the morning go home, turn around, bring them in at night, <laughs> yeah. and that's a lot of snowsuits and things to be putting on and off, and kids are getting tired, <laughs> you know, after all that back and forth. So yeah. this is, I think this is way better. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that, and it was another successful year, and of course the Kiwanis always do such a great job organizing that, and I know it's a lot of work, but... <laughs> it's a lot of work, and you know, there's a lot of, like the Kiwanians, community volunteers, mm -hmm. different service, other service clubs that help out, Yeah. so it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know that you've been a member of the Kiwanis for a number of years now. You've been I involved. Have. And I was thinking this morning, I should have actually checked the date yeah. because it's one of those things I just kind of forget about it, but it's been a long time. <laughs> and what, what initially, do you remember what initially drew you into the organization? Like, why did you want to become a member? Well, I, lo I like doing things and helping out the community. I was actually thinking about joining a service club at the time and then my friend Gary Levine came and said, oh, you should come to Kiwanis, come for lunch. So I went to a couple of luncheons and I, I actually did go to a couple other service clubs as well and I'm like, mm, no, Kiwanis I think is the right fit for me because everybody has different ideas and what, what works for you in one club may not work for you in another club, but Kiwanis worked for me and uh, we have a lot of fun. We do a lot of good work mm -hmm. and yeah. And you just keep Here on we doing are. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know that you're you're constantly looking for new members as well to keep everything running. And uh, actually, my neighbor was recently um, in the last probably six months. She joined the Kiwanis. Who's uh, that? Elaine. Oh yes. Yeah. So she loves it. Every time I talk to her, I swear she's talking about Kiwanis and how much she enjoys it. And she's trying to recruit me to become an Kiwanis you should, member. You should come out for a lunch and That's try it That's what she out. said. She's like, come as, to a lunch as my guest and, yeah. you know, kind of go from there. She's like, no pressure. You know, it's not like you're, you know, siding on the dotted line. Just come for lunch, right? So, and see what see what it's all about. We've been lucky in the past couple of years that we have recruited quite a few members. And I think because we, I don't, I don't want to say this the wrong way. Right. However, we have changed a lot of the things that we used to do and kind of brought it back into today's world and what it's like. Right. Um, I mean, when Kiwanis started, it was an all men's club mm -hmm. and they met, you know, religiously at noon downtown every day had their, at that time, I think about a two hour lunch and then wandered back to work. Mm -hmm. Well, life's not like that now. Yeah. And yeah. the best thing that ever happened to Qantas was when they finally relaxed the rules and let women join. <laughs> because we all know who does most of the work. Right. I love it. I love it. And I mean, I think I feel like guys, sorry guys. I feel like I mean, a lot gonna... of the male Qantas members would probably not argue that point. <laughs> probably not. They know better. <laughs> they do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, the parade is now come and gone, which is awesome, but there's still lots going on with Kiwanis. I know you've got your tree sale. That just started on Friday. This is such a crazy time of the year for us. Yeah. Um, this is when we do our major fundraising for mm -hmm. the year. So the tree, trees are on sale and I actually, I wrote it down because I thought for sure I'll get there and I'll forget <laughs> what the prices are and when it starts. Mm -hmm. So it, this is our 72nd year selling Christmas trees. Wow, I did not know that. 
Yeah. I, I, I remember going to the tree lot as a kid because I grew up here in Owenstown. So I remember going with my family to pick out a tree, but I didn't realize that it had been going on. So I knew it had been happening for at least 30 years. Yeah. But 72, wow. 72 years. Okay. So, of course, it takes place up at um, the, bo I always call it the bowling alley yeah. plaza. Yeah, beside right beside the Royal, Royal LePage. LePage. Yeah. Yeah. So the address is actually 900 10th Street West, for those of you who, who aren't familiar where those are. And um, we're taking cash, debit, or credit this year. So we've got the machine there. So that makes it a lot handier because people, you know, slipping home from work or something don't always have the cash yeah. um, to be able to pick out a tree. We've had one year I was working the lot. There was somebody who came from way up in the Bruce Peninsula, came all the way down to get a Christmas tree got it tied on the top of their car and drove home and they said they wanted to support Kiwanis because they know all the funds stay here and support children Wow! in this area. So, so that just gave me chills. I know. That's such a nice story. It's awesome, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay. And then some people come to get trees and we and they, we say to them, can we tie this on? No, no, I've got it. And then you wonder, is it really, really going to make is it, it home? Get there? <laughs> But yeah, hopefully it does. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun, and it, we have like Scotch pine, balsam fir, and Fraser fir. And I'm just gonna say, if you want a Fraser fir, get there early because they sell out really quickly. Okay, that's the most popular one. It is. It's the most expensive because they don't lose their needles, and they have that beautiful Christmassy smell. Right. Um, but they go first. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. All right, so the when can people get? So I wrote the, the hours trees. down here. So Monday to Friday, the lot's open 4 to 7. Uh, Saturday, 10 to 5. Sunday's 12 to 4. Okay. And, you know, we have some people who will go in and pick out a tree. They don't have their truck or whatever. We'll, they can pay for it. We tag it and set it aside, and they come back and pick it up. Oh. We also, for $10, do delivery in town. Mm-hmm. So, so for people that don't have a truck or exactly. even a vehicle, but they want to exactly. get a tree. Yeah. That's a really nice option to have that. Yeah, it is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So and it's, it's fun. I'm going to miss, I might do a couple of shifts up there, but I'm going to be really busy because yeah. we started this new initiative. Well, it hasn't. It, We've it's got started. involved with this <laughs> initiative, which right. has been going on for quite some time, and that's gift wrapping at mm -hmm. the mall. So the Quota Club mm -hmm. have done it for years and made a great success of it. However, we partnered with them this year because like a lot of service clubs, members dwindle. Mm -hmm. So you're really stretched and you don't want your members to, volunteers to burn themselves out being there all the time. So it's been great because we've partnered with them. So you'll, there'll be lots of volunteers there to take over the gift wrapping. Mm -hmm. um, we decided that all the proceeds are going to a charity that we both support, and that's uh, Chapman House. Okay. So that's where the proceeds will be going to. So when you come to the mall, um, you'll probably see some of your familiar faces you're used to dealing with when you're going up to get your gift, gift wrapping done, but there'll be some newbies like me up yeah. there gift wrapping. <laughs> do, you, um, do you feel prepared to take on that role with your experience in gift wrapping? Oh. <laughs> Is sure. there is there a crash course or you just bring in your skills in? I think there may be in? a crash course. I've had a lot of people say, and both male and female, like, whoa, no, I can't rap. And I said, I was joking, and I said, I, my husband never has to put a tag on whatever he wraps for me because he does it in newsprint and gorilla tape. So... Is there any other way? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we have some really experienced gift wrappers. And like I said to you before we started, mm -hmm. one of the things that we've been talking about is having like some celebrity wrappers there. Some competition. Yeah, a little I competition. Know. I don't know. I, I, I know how to wrap a present, but I don't know that my skills are necessarily uh, award winning. So <laughs> I well, might have to do some practicing beforehand. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, some of the ladies from Quota Club will be able to give us a helping hand here and get us in the right direction. Yeah, but absolutely. It's fun, and I was surprised when I mentioned it to Kiwanis and a lot of the members, some males as well, were really excited about it, and they want to volunteer. Okay. One of our male members, and I won't mention his name, um, said, I do all the wrapping at home. My wife's not very good at it, so, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's so funny. Um, do you know when that's going to be starting? It is starting on November the 9th. Okay. Or, sorry, December. I am December. stuck on November. I know. It's okay. December. It's hard to believe it's almost okay. December. So December 9th, it's okay. starting. And where we are, Kiwanis actually has a clubhouse. We've rented a space at the mall. Mm -hmm. We have our own room there, clubhouse, and we have all... It, it's great because we have a lot of displays set up. People can come in and take a look at um, tributes to other members and things that we've accomplished as Kiwanians over the years. So it is, if you come in the Food Basics entrance, mm -hmm. it's just along there past the washrooms, right in there, you won't okay. miss it. Okay. We'll be set up in front of there. And um, yeah, starting November 9th. So the hours are, Monday to Friday, 11.30 to 5.30. Okay. Saturdays, 11.30 to 5.30. And Sunday, 11 to 5. Ex then it changes on the 19th of December because then people are really getting into the shopping. So the 19th to the 23rd is from 10 to 7. And then, of course, the 24th is 11 to 4. And I hope everybody has their because I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I'm very last minute when it comes to shopping. But, uh, but that. Well, I have to say, I work better under pressure. Yeah, exactly. with the Quota Club. I think mm -hmm. this is a great, great partnership for the community to be able to do this. And I know we partnered with the Optimus Club in the summer for the bike rodeo. Right. And they had someone who fixed, like, they had some older bikes and other bikes. They had somebody there who could fix them. We supplied helmets for oh. children who didn't have helmets. Okay. So we were really happy to do that with the Optimus. And yeah, and it's nice that you're able to have those friendly partnerships and, you know, because you're not competing. No, we're not you know, competing. You know, you're all service groups, yes, but you're not competing. I mean, at the end of the day, the community benefits from all of the work that all of you put in. So why wouldn't you collaborate? And, you know, each service club has a little different niche. Right, yeah. So... Um, yeah, you specifically fundraise for, for, for children. Right, and I know a lot of the other ones do too, but in a different way. So I just, you know, I thought I'd talk for a minute about the money we've given away this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, yeah. Because um, we do a lot of hard work for fundraising to do this. So we, um, Staples stuff the bus. Mm -hmm. So that's always a good one because it, it's for the backpack program through United Way for the kids going to school. And we managed to stuff the bus with $5,000 worth of products. Wow. And that's just you going in to shop and saying, you know, somebody's there and saying, would you consider? And sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the little things. Um, we've given away this year in scholarships $15,000 to students at the high schools. Wow. Okay. So. And the, do students, uh, they apply for those? Yes. Okay. Or sometimes the teachers oh, okay. will say, they'll put, say, you know, so-and-so, um, really need some help. In fact, there was a story of one young man who had said, told his teacher he was really talented in something and wanted to go on and said, I can't do it because we don't have the money. Anyway, we were able to help them out enough that he could go on. Wow. So, That's yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had a five-year commitment to a bunch of different community organizations like the um, Children's Choir, um, I can't remember who else, but reach a lot of them, and and we gave between twenty five thousand and fifty thousand dollars to those different, and that was a five year commitment. So, it's great. The one thing we we changed was, you know, you would come in uh, and ask for some money for your organization, and we would be able to give you a thousand or two thousand or whatever if if you qualified and we had the funds. Mm -hmm. However, a few years ago, we decided to change that and make it a five year commitment, so we could give you so much money every year for five years so that if you started a program you're able to keep on with it. Wow, okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, hmm. yeah, we have a lot of good thinkers, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it sounds like it. Do you know how many members are currently with Kiwanis or is it kind of hard to, to know because everybody's kind of involved in different aspects? I think it's either 53 or 55 now okay. that we've grown to. Okay. So, and as I said, we're enticing new people in all the time because it is fun and that's the thing you do what you can do mm -hmm. and you don't feel guilty if you can't do something yeah 
Yeah. It's just. Is there a, like is there an amount of hours per month that you're expected to no. contribute? No. Okay. No. It's that was one of the things we changed, you know, way back when. It used to be um, we had a meeting every week. You were only allowed to miss a couple meetings unless you had a good excuse, like you were deathly ill or something. That's all gone by the wayside now. People do what they can do. It's busy time. Yeah. Yeah. People's lives are busy. They are, but you know, they want to help out when and where yeah. they're able to. Yeah. So that's nice that Kiwanis is, you know, a, an organization they can join and not feel pressured to be involved in exactly. everything and not be have, have to feel like they need to be at every event, but you know, I mean, for instance, you said one of your members uh, really enjoys gift wrapping, so he's mm -hmm. going to be helping out with the gift wrapping because it's something he wants to do. Exactly. Right. Yeah, and you know, at the tree lot. The tree lot is fun. Yeah. It really is a lot of well, fun. Well, you said you're going to help out a little bit. Well, yeah, I might. <laughs> Just because it's <laughs> fun. Somebody that will be written in stone somewhere. Somebody will be sending me an email and <laughs> say, we put you in for this ship. But it always is fun. And you have the people that come in, you know, with the kids. Yeah. And they all have to take turns picking out a tree. Or one year, we had one guy came in and he said, I just want the ugliest tree you have. And we're looking at him. He goes, well, no, it's a thing. It's got to be an ugly tree. Like the so Charlie like, Brown tree. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. We, I'm sure we can find you one. Most of our trees are pretty good. Yeah. And they're all, the thing is, they are cut and delivered right away. Okay. So you know that they're fresh. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, I know that they, they range in price, I think, starting at about $50. I think the my, my trusty list here. Yeah, yeah the, Scotch pine are at fifty. Okay. Um, balsam for seventy five, and then the Fraser fir are more expensive, and I think they range between ninety to one hundred and ten, depending and, on the size. Right, and you said those are the most popular. Those are the most popular because they're the prettiest. They're the prettiest. They <laughs> smell the nicest, and the needles last on those for right. a long time. So for people who like to leave them up over into January for some of the other uh, religious holidays they yeah. can leave them out when do you put up your tree <laughs> well normally i do it the first part of december okay but my schedule is a little hectic right now so i was thinking about that driving in i don't know when i'm going to get it up but yeah <laughs> hopefully sooner than rather than later <laughs> yes i hope so because i love christmas yes me too i also love christmas i think we usually put ours up uh december 1st that's usually what we try yeah. for we'll see if that happens or yeah because yeah. as you said life is life is busy but uh the gift wrapping is going to be starting at the mall uh december 9th right and that's uh, a great opportunity there for you to par partner uh, is what's the price for that or is it by donation no it's going to range the size of gift okay. two dollars five dollars or seven dollars okay and then we do have some boxes however we were able to get bigger boxes this year for those bigger items yeah. and they're beautiful. I was okay. going to stop and pick one up and bring it in for <laughs> show and tell but trust me they're beautiful so we'll be charging a little more for those but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's affordable and it's all for a great cause because it's helping out the community so hopefully. And if anyone wants to gift wrap the more the merrier. Give me a call or give somebody from the Quota <laughs> Club a call and we'll get you on the schedule. They're, the schedules aren't, they're not long, like right. they're a couple hours each, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Linda, for all the information. Thank you, Sarah. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. We can be hurt, we can be bruised, we can be broken, slowed down, confused, and even numbed. But we can't be defeated. We're built on a foundation that's strong, our mission unwavering, and together we'll beat as one. Do you have something to share? Let everyone know about your next meeting, your need for volunteers, or your fundraising event on the Rogers TV Community Billboard. Send us your words and we'll bring them to life on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. When it's time to spread the word, go to RogersTV.com to add your announcement to the Community Billboard.
Welcome back to Great County Life. Renee is here from the Owen Sound Animal Shelter and she has brought a special friend. We sure have and we've done so many dogs and puppies. I'm excited to have a cat today. Yes. Does not mean I don't have cats at the animal shelter because I definitely do and I want you to call me. <laughs> but this one is extra special um, and it's kind of a thing I want to show off anyway because we were like, this is cool. I mean, to all of you quickly tuning in, he looks like an orange and white cat, which is pretty common. But if we zoom in super closely, I'm going to do my best to like. <laughs> the tip out, excuse you, um, is a very small black dot on the tip of his tail. Yeah. Now, this cat came to us originally with the name Simba. As a uh, owner surrender, uh, they had allergies to him, which, I mean, gives us some history on him, which is great. Um, they didn't identify this little tip to us at all um, when they surrendered him. So we actually weren't sure that he hadn't, like, dipped it in something. Right. Um, he has, however, recently been vetted. Um, only like two days ago, he lost his little boy parts. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, and we had the vet double check it for us. Uh, yeah. Like, what is this? Is and it a stain? Is yeah, it supposed to be there? What has he done to himself? Right? Yeah. We um, often worry about things in the winter that change hair color, like frostbite. Um, but it's summertime and like his tail seems fine. And the answer is no, nah, it's just his color. What this actually makes him is a male calico cat, which we don't ever have. Nope. So he's a rarity. So perhaps you're somebody who wanted something extra special. Yeah. This little guy's name is now Inkwell, as in the little things you dip your feather thing in, <laughs> Google it, because I had to Google it to find out the name of that thing. Um, I thought it was like a blotter. I was like, I don't know. But I was like, we can't call him blotter. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking dotty. Exactly. It's a little dotty. Dot. was another idea we had or tippy right but we get a lot of dotties and tippies so i wanted something completely different you can change it but for the time being we're calling him inkwell <laughs> he's also got like he's also got like beauty mark he little does. like he's got like a cindy crawford like beauty oh, mark on his face he is one handsome fella he is um he is only seven months old of age so as you can thanks this will help us demonstrate how big you are um, he's a big cat and he's going to be a big cat probably a very heavy cat yeah um, something that may encourage you to take him or discourage you and it, that's why I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, he has, of course, his neuter, his vaccines, deworming, defleeing, all of that stuff has been done and taken care of. He's great with dogs, cats, and kids. So pretty much this cat is perfect for absolutely anywhere and he's a great conversation piece for <laughs> the, the next 20 years. You'll be able to say, look at my cat's tail. Yeah, <laughs> right? he is a calico, believe right? it or he, not. He is, he is. Now, he would have um, supposedly not been able to produce offspring, but uh, we still remove those pieces just because for so many other reasons they had to leave. But yeah. um, he, he was <gasps> never going to be He's got the pinkest nose. I know. Look, can you like, look, look at his little pink nose. nose. Say, look at my nose. He's so cute. He is really sweet. Oh, my gosh. Um, and again, he's been absolutely fantastic with everybody. He'd fit just about anywhere. And he's young. Yeah. So you've got him a really long time. Yeah, he's nice. going to be your buddy. Yeah. See, I'm a best boy. Oh, my I'm goodness. The best boy. And uh, of course, if anybody's interested in meeting Mr. Inkwell or whatever yes. you choose to call him, call me. Uh, you can call Renee, 519 372 Absolutely. And and what did you bring here? What are these? What am I smelling? I'm smelling to, treats. You are smelling like goodness. animal treats. You are. <laughs> Don't eat it. Okay. Um, and I'll be very careful how I say it because I often get these words all really confused. They are our Christmas stuffed socks. Okay. Whew. Christmas stuffed socks. Yes. And I mean, yeah, hold one up for me. They're giant stretchy socks of goodness. Okay. Um, what you have in your hand is the dog sock, and we recommend people hang them from the fireplace only if your pet cannot reach it because right. often they decide to help themselves before Christmas. Yes. Um, there is a variety of treats and toys, goodies. Dog food in the bottom? Dog food in that one. Other that or, the, it's either yeah, that or a can of beer, no, I'm right. not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think there's dog food in that one. Um, a variety of things. We do our best to make those hypoallergenic, good for dogs with special needs, and you can special order them if you've got special oh. needs, which is a huge bonus and a lot of people wonder. Okay. That one in your hand is the cat one. Mm -hmm. I think there's some catnip in there. You can't go see it. Oh, he's like, I'm oh. interested. I'm interested. <laughs> I see? piqued the interest. They are, we have to hide them in the, in the shelter in a very special spot because they're food. Yeah. <laughs> um, they are available while supplies last, and it's to help us raise money for our spay neuter medical fund, and they're only $4 each, oh. um, which is pretty darn cheap and That's cute and cute. fun. And also, if you buy two, you get a pair of socks. 
Yeah, I mean, they right? might not match, they, but. <laughs> right? You could have socks as well when you're yeah. done with them. They might smell like liver bits, but it's okay. <laughs> it could be, butter, uh, it could be another uh, toy for the dog. Absolutely. Right? Because if, if you've got a dog like mine, they like yep. to chew stuff, so that could be a little extra, Absolutely. extra so if, fun. If I can be honest, my <laughs> dogs open their own at home, and that's part of the fun. We see how long it can take them to destroy the sock. Right. Not something I recommend for everyone. It is a supervised activity, but, but yeah. you know, not necessarily not? a habit you want to That's get them right. into. But if you want to, why not? I mean, otherwise fun. you've got yourself a pair of socks. Oh, excuse oh. you. Uh, Inkwell had his neuter just two days ago and he was tubed. Apparently he's got a little bit of an irritation in his throat. Don't oh. worry about it. He's okay. Yeah. Right? You're okay. These things happen. <laughs> Okay. He's like, I really want those treats. Yeah, he's I, like, I can, can smell I, can it. I, I can, can hear I that you, little jingle just, ball. Hang on, I'll let you smell it. Yeah. I'll let you smell it. <laughs> okay. There. <laughs> there. And the cute little pipe cleaner also works as a cat toy, just saying. We've done yeah. that as well in the past. Um, they are available while supplies last. We do really hope that you call us or email us to tell us you want them. Don't just show up. Okay. That was going to be my question. Yeah, because yeah. we do want to make sure we have enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. It kind of gets a little crazy, which is totally awesome. Mm -hmm. um, they will be available only while supplies last, so it could be next week. It could be next month. I mean, we hope to have enough for everybody. Yeah. But, you know, there's only so many socks in Owen Sound. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the reality of it. We buy them all. Especially and, and the Christmas socks. That's right. And right? Those are out of socks. High demand right now. Exactly. That's and great. it is our volunteers that stuff them, so I'm not really sure what's in all of them, but for the most part, it's all good. Yeah. Really good things. All good treats. Yeah. That's a really cute idea. A little extra something for your animal friends for Christmas because they are, of course, part of the family. So why wouldn't they exactly have their own Christmas stocking? Exactly. But yeah, I would definitely have to keep them up, up. because my <laughs> dogs would destroy that. Yes. This wouldn't be something going under the tree. Oh. There is, there's no, uh, no. self-control no. when it comes to treats for my dogs at the house. We give them out with a warning. Be careful where you store it. Yeah. Right? They'll find it. They're smart like that. It <laughs> smells really good, as you've mentioned. You yes. can smell, I, I can, can smell it as well. They're very <laughs> fragrant. <laughs> I can smell yeah, it too. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. So if anyone's interested, they can contact you directly yep. by phone or email or uh, through the uh, through the Facebook page yep, as well. You got it. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, if you're interested in uh, one of these great uh, Christmas stockings for your pets, or if you're interested in talking to Mr. Inkwell here about maybe bringing him into your home, uh, it's always a great uh, uh, you know great great thing to think about if you are wanting to add a companion. You know, taking in a shelter animal is is always a great thing to do because well they need you they do they, they come into the shelter for various reasons and they are just you know they really do. deserving of love so uh, get, get in contact with Renee uh, the phone number again is 372 uh, 1123 and of course you can always find them on Facebook thank you so much Renee thank you good job buddy the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. I'm Nicole Martin, the proud ambassador for the Comfort Bear program. Comfort Bears provide these cuddly bears to local children who are terminally ill, facing trauma, or battling a serious illness. Every $20 donation will place a Comfort Bear into the loving arms of a child involved in our program. It is our hope to distribute 1,000 bears in 2022. Please join us and provide comfort to kids in their time of need. Today, I helped a senior find transportation to an important medical appointment. Today, I helped a new mom find virtual programming so she didn't feel so isolated. Today, I helped someone understand new government supports. Every day, 
211 navigators connect Canadians to